CNN is investigating potential mass detention centers in remote parts of China and getting some pushback, as you'd expect, from Chinese authorities. As many as two million Muslim major uh, majority Uyghurs are believed to be imprisoned in Xinjiang, according to the U.S. State Department, where they are allegedly being taught Mandarin in Communist Party propaganda. China claims they are just vocational training centers. When Matt Rivers' report on the camps aired on China, uh, on CNN, well, as you see there, the screen went black. CNN was allowed back on after the piece aired. As Matt Rivers explains, Chinese authorities made his investigation into these camps very difficult. So the CNN Beijing Bureau just spent a week reporting in the western Chinese province of Xinjiang. And it's not an easy place to do journalism. So we wanted to show you a little bit of what we went through, but I think more importantly, tell you why that matters. Xinjiang is the province where the U.S. says China has detained up to two million people, nearly all Muslims, in camps over the last few years. Activists say Beijing has done that to try and eliminate Islam within its borders, and ex-detainees have told CNN they were tortured inside while undergoing political indoctrination. China denies that and says these camps aren't prisons, but voluntary vocational training centers that are being used to not eliminate Islam, only Islamic extremism. Now, China's government says that Xinjiang is wide open for us to freely report there, maybe in theory, but in reality, that's just not true. For example, upon landing there, our welcome gift was a government tale. We've already been followed by three or four guys, including one of them who I've seen follow us from the second we got out of the baggage area. That would be this man. He and at least a dozen others followed us every single hour of our six-day trip, never more than 20 feet away. In the car, in the train station, in the hotel, in the room next to mine. So it's a bit of an odd feeling to be in your hotel room at one in the morning and knowing that on the other side of this connecting door, which leads to the room next door to mine, there's at least three, four of the guys who have been following us around over the past couple days. It felt like intimidation tactics. They wanted us to know that we were being followed. And then, of course, there were the uniformed cops that showed up at odd hours. We should check okay. your house on the visa. It's almost Is 1 it a.m. Yes. Also, so, I, watch so yes. I, I know, but I was sleeping. Uh, it just I'm seems unnecessary. I'm sorry to bother you. OK. Sorry. OK. So. This is what happens when you do journalism in Xinjiang. I've lived here for nearly four years, and I've watched as things have gotten tougher and tougher for foreign journalists on all types of different stories. Xinjiang is probably just the most extreme example. But beyond just being followed, there were the more obvious attempts to try and make sure that we saw nothing they didn't want us to. For example, a highway we were on was closed for hours due to an accident nowhere to be seen. Not to mention spontaneous roadblocks that specifically target foreigners and ethnic minorities. Our IDs were checked nearly 50 times in six days. And the second you book a flight or a train, the government knows about it. And you can tell that because, well, government officials are waiting for you upon arrival. They clearly knew we were coming. They met us at the airport. They're checking our visas. They're telling us they want to accompany us for our own safety. But really, this is just stalling tactics. They know it, we know it, and yet this is the game we have to play. China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs say they don't know anything about the harassment we faced, but said Xinjiang is, quote, open and hospitable. The constant tales, the constant harassment, the constant delays, they're more than just inconvenient. They are specific tactics China's government has employed for a long time to prevent journalists from doing their jobs. But in the last few years, there is broad agreement in the foreign journalism community here that it's gotten worse, nowhere more so than Xinjiang. The end result is that it's nearly impossible to freely report on the hundreds of thousands of people that are likely languishing in camps right now. And that means that the rest of the world can't really see what's going on there. This is one of the biggest human rights stories on Earth. And as we saw firsthand, China is actively trying to cover it up. It sure is. Uh, what extraordinary reporting by our Matt Rivers and important to see uh, the challenges that he and other reporters face as they try to uncover what is happening in Xinjiang. Now, China has been using advanced technology to keep an eye on the Uyghurs 
in the Xinjiang Autonomous Territory. Visitors report surveillance cameras and facial recognition equipment throughout public areas. There are mandatory GPS trackers installed on vehicles and apps that monitor data flows on Uyghurs' smartphones. They are even collecting DNA samples from all residents between 12 and 65 years old. It's just stunning, isn't it? If you want to learn more about the story, just go to our website and follow Matt Rivers' exclusive reporting on Xinjiang and the Uyghurs. That's all on CNN.com. Powerful stuff there.